What are the 10 things that beginners need to know when it comes to lofting? Whether it's the amount of profiles, how to control them, which guide rails to use, how to solve between face-to-face -face and adjust for curvature, it's all coming up. Hey, this is Tyler Beck with Tech and Espresso. Okay, tip number one. There are three types of lofts. There's a solid loft that you can find in the create command. There is the orange surface loft that basically has no thickness and you'd have to thicken it if you wanna use it later for solid geometry. And finally, there's the sculpted loft that you can find in the form workspace. Number two, keep in mind that you don't always need loft when you have one profile becoming another. In this example, I have a rectangle that tapers out or a rectangle that tapers down. And usually people are thinking about a loft for this example, but you can achieve that with an extrude where you are extruding one shape and you're applying a taper. So just keep that in mind that if it is just a simple shape that needs to taper at some certain angle, then you can achieve that with extrude. Number three, generally it's two planes, two sketches and two different shapes. So let's look at it. First, we start by working from like a rectangle and then we use the construction plane, go off at a distance. And now we're gonna sketch the second profile, which in this case happens to be a circle. This is a great example of loft because we're going from one very different profile to another very different profile. And that's what loft does really well. We're gonna do the solid loft from one profile to the next. It keeps track of each one. So this is my first selection, second selection. And if we had more, we'd continue to add. And there's some options that we'll get into in just a minute. But we're lofting from one profile to the other. Again, we're solving a pretty complex geometry here that could not be achieved with like a revolve or an extrude. We're transitioning from a circle to a rectangle. Number four, connectors. This is the way you can add a lot more control and solution to your loft. Let's just say that you're solving from the corner of each rectangle up to the circle, but you'd like for it to kind of um, neck down on this side and be wider on the top side. So we'll maybe change our view here. I'm going to drag these connectors and it's resolving. So it's adding this kind of taper on this back side and we're going wider on the other side. So it's changing the way it solves, adding this taper at this end, adding a bigger opening there. And we can do that by dragging the connectors. Number five, you do not have to have sketches. So I'm basically breaking that earlier general rule, right? So we can loft from two faces. We'll do a search for loft with our S key, and I'm gonna select the face and the other face. You know, they're, you notice they're two very different profiles and it's solving between them. So you can just loft from face to face. You don't have to have sketches. Number six, the curvature solution. So in this one, I'd like to have it kind of transition a little bit smoother to cre create this um, head of this golf club. Okay, so let's go to the dialogue. I'm gonna choose to solve this second to the second profile with tangency. It's gonna resolve and it, you can see it introduces that nice curve and that's more in line with the design that I'm trying to solve. There are additional parameters you can adjust like tangency weight. Number seven, you can loft to a point, rectangle to a point. I'm gonna choose loft. We start our loft command, we go from rectangle to a point and it does solve. Now, a few other options to be aware of. This doesn't just exist in the point example, but you can control what's called direction. And that's effectively, in this case, we're solving how long does it stay in a rectangle before transitioning to the next profile. So we can control that I want a rectangle for a while and then transition to the point. Also, do you want to solve to a sharp point or would you like it to solve with tangency? Number eight, when you've got multi-profiles, if you click out of order, Fusion is going to try to solve it, but it's gonna freak out. So I'm adding this as third and it's almost inverting on itself, that won't solve. 
What we can do is reorder. So I can set this to profile two, and now it's solving in the right order. But if you need to, close it out, and then just select your profiles in the correct order, this time solving much better. Number nine, let's talk about guide rails. This one can be tricky. It's very powerful, but tricky. So what I'm gonna do is introduce a spline, and you'll notice that I'm gonna sketch off just barely to the side and solve it. Hit the check mark, I've got this spline. We can continue to manipulate the spline with its handles, get this just how we want it. But the important thing is that your rail connect to the profile. So what I like to do is select the, both. I'm gonna use the look at, do the point to the point and do coincident. Great, and that's the lower profile. This upper one, I'm gonna to try to connect it as well and do coincident. Sometimes fusion won't connect, it's very quirky. So you may have to change your approach to make sure that it's adding a coincident at both profiles. If there's multiple profiles, like say there was a middle, we wanna make sure that that's also connecting uh, through the rail. Let's do a test and make sure that this loft solves. So if I choose loft, profile, profile, and we choose the rail, it solves, looks good. Now the other side isn't what I want it to do. And generally speaking, it's a good idea to have almost opposing rails um, to provide a thorough solution for what you want. Coming back to the sketch. So let's introduce another spline. So we'll sketch that. And I'm gonna do something similar, but maybe this time it's a little wider than the other. I'll hit the check mark. And again, I need to make sure that there's that coincident relationship. Maybe even adjust that spline handle once we get that closer to what we want. Do the point to the point, coincident, make sure they connect, and then use your spline control can maybe solve how you want. If you want this kind of solving more at an angle or coming in horizontally, so we can come in more vertically or more horizontal, we can solve that way. We'll hit the check, finish the sketch. Let's now try the loft again, this time solving between two profiles. And that solves. I don't really know what I built here, but you can see the power of having both rails on both sides and you have that control. Number 10, when you have multiple profiles that you know and you have those sketches and you have the distances, loft is an incredibly easy way to solve this. Simply selecting those profiles, then adding ad any additional guide rails for more control um, can help you solve your design faster. With a sweep, this would be tricky because you're limited to one guide rail and trying to solve between these different changes in that shape, it can be limiting in fusion. So a good fit for the loft. Hey, and if you're trying to learn sweep, check out the top 10 tips for beginners learning sweep.